Are we ready to start? Yep, yep. Hello, oh, and Ed, <laughs> can you hear my heater on behind me? Uh, no, I can't. Okay, cool. Because it's quite loud in my ear, so excellent. Cool. Hello, and welcome to episode 280 of Science on Top. Today is Sunday, the 29th of October, 2016. I'm Ed Brown, and I'm joined by Dr. Shane Joseph. G'day. Penny Dumsday. Hello. Lucas Randall. Hello. And pain specialist, Dr. Mick Vag. Welcome back. Thanks, Ed. It's never less than a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the humour there is not so much what you said, but on. when Skype just that draw that out. <laughs> never uh, less than a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I had a mouthful of beer. I had a mouthful of beer. I had a over the computer every week. <laughs> I'm stopping Zencaster because uh, we're never going to finish uh, the show if we laugh every time uh, he speaks. Maybe, maybe get him on Skype. It's just, this is probably not true. Yeah, yeah, we're recording him on Skype. <clears throat> just not a local recording. That's all right. Today we're going to. Oh, for fuck's sake. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Today we're going to talk. <laughs> uh, we haven't been this loose for a while, have we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think Petty should get myself. drunk more often. <laughs> I'm just going to mute myself and then you do intro, and then when you introduce me, I'll unmute myself and say hi. I haven't already done the intros? I thought I laughed over it. Just a me. That's fine. F- fuck it. We're Whatever. starting again. Whatever. We are starting from scratch. Uh, this is plenty for the blooper reel from exactly. this one. Exactly. Well, we haven't had bloopers for a while. You've all been so well behaved. Hello and welcome to episode 280 of Science on Top. Today is Sunday, the 29th of October, 2016. I'm Ed Brown and I'm joined... <laughs> you know, it says 29th. But I read 26th. Yeah, but it's the year that's wrong. It's the year. Oh, yeah, shit. You said 26th. Yeah, this is also last year's uh, script that I've modified. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice. That's how... <laughs> oh, man. We are, we're, we're not going to get past the fucking cats, are we? <laughs> the fucking date of the podcast. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh, Oh, this right. does not bode well. <laughs> All right. Hello and welcome to episode 280 of Science on Top. Today is Sunday the 29th of October. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't do it. I am so we sorry, Mick. This is not the professional uh, enterprise you're used to working with. Are you there, so, Mick? Yeah, yeah, oh. I'm just too scared to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was clear. <laughs> yeah, I've quit Zencaster. Yeah, we've, we've stopped recording. Hello and welcome. To, oh, Hello and welcome to episode 280 of Science on Top. Today is Sunday, the 29th of October, 2017. I'm Ed Brown and I'm joined by Dr. Shane Jones. <laughs> who's quit? Who's quit? Not joined by Shane. We're not joined by Shane. What the fuck just happened to me? You said on his door. Hello. I don't. I don't know what is happening. <laughs> <He's back. laughs> that was fucking hell. This is, this is fucking curse. <laughs> it's it's, it's me. Cat cat. It always happens when it's. <laughs> Can you double check your recording, Shane? Um, yeah, if I can figure out this stupid thing. I don't get it. I don't know where the recording thing is. Bottom right-hand corner, there's a little arrow. You click on that, it'll get the red thing that says MP3 Skype recorder. Shut up, Lucas. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I was laughing at the figure three. A cat spontaneously rotates in a cylindrical jar. <laughs> uh, apparently it is... Where are you? Yeah, rec- uh, recording call. Yep, it's all, it's all, all right. right. <laughs> all right. Cool. Hey, look, twentieth time's a charm. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. Everyone ready? I didn't see reindeer bot. Shit, I should have clicked on that. It sounds awesome. <laughs> reindeer bot fly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bot fly. Not okay. Not just a reindeer's <laughs> ass. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking. I was yeah. I was thinking of like some sort of uh, robot reindeer. Oh, yeah, that's probably <laughs> reindeer <more>. bot. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we can save that for next week if you want. Um, yeah, I'm not I haven't actually read. Bot flies in the ass. It does have possibly the best sentence ever in a uh, science article. Actually, where is that? Let me um, drag that up. Just just for our humour. Um, then she hovers in the air, squirting tiny maggots into the host's nose, using what I can only describe as a weaponized maggot-shooting vaginal gun. Holy fuck! <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, yeah. There's something to think wow. about. Uh, all right. We should start. No? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. wow. I was pausing. That's very awkward. Well, a vaginal gun will do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I mean, we've, we've certainly uh, encountered more than enough spear-throwing penises mm, and stuff. That's true. That's, uh, yeah. Hello? <laughs> oh, wow. I haven't even started Welcome back. Yet. Yeah. Bring it. We're fucking professionals, mate. We, we are. We have to have our first blooper recording. It has to be on the first show back. That's like a rule or something, maybe. The, it was like first... literally the first syllable of the first <laughs> word. We didn't, even get, we didn't even get to Ed's intro before we just fucked up. <laughs> wow. All right. Everyone shut up. Today is Sunday, the 25th of June, 26th. Hmm. Yeah. What, uh, what fucking year yeah. is it? <laughs> <laughs> and on today's show, we'll be talking about a potential... Pe- no, we're not. That was last week we did the peanut allergy <laughs> cure. Who the fuck wrote this? Sc- oh, wait, it was me. Um, Some massive tool. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> so I was just trying to be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mars is a tool. It's a great big tool. The dark matter of the microbial world. And what was. No, we're not going to talk about the original paleo diet now, are we? Fuck. No, because it's too hard. It's too bloody hard. We should like leave that in. Yeah. To let everybody no. know that we. We just <laughs> no, like, we... nah, we just noped away nah, from nah, that. Nah, we just, we, we just thought, fuck that. We can't be bothered. Today so, like we're going to be shit. talking about. Stuff that was too hard, actually, so we're going to bail on that. Forget it. Yeah, pretty Forget much. I mentioned it. And I want, to, I want to hear more about your, uh, um, well, adventures. Is that the right word? When you were bailed up by the uh, border protection people in the US? Oh. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, you haven't heard about that, Ed? Uh, we're still recording. Lynn, go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Final story? Essentially... Uh, when I went to the US for release of the book, the publication of the memory code there, I got hauled into security by these great big men in black with guns and my po- my passport confiscated and I wasn't allowed to talk to anyone. It was extraordinarily frightening in February. And eventually I got, about an hour later, got my passport back and was allowed to leave. And it seemed, they never did explain, but it seemed to be because I had a new passport which had a different number from last time I went to America. But that's always true of Australian passports. Yeah, every every new one is a new number. Yeah. So it's perfectly normal. And yet I was made to feel like a criminal and was threatened that I wouldn't be allowed into the States. It, it was really scary. Now you, they- you, mentioned, you mentioned also about the, the people who you were with, the other what, detainees, for want of a better yeah. word? There was there was a guy that didn't speak English and he went to go to his bag for something because he didn't know. We weren't allowed to talk to each other. We are all separated, um, you know, in, in the one big room. And one of these big men in black just came, went churning over to him, started yelling at him not to touch anything, and the guy didn't speak English. And he was petrified. He had no oh. idea what was going on. It really, and I know Mem Fox and there's other people have talked about it. Yes. It's, it's yeah. not an isolated incident. It's, it just is really frightening. 
That is not the story that I was expecting. I thought it would be something you had a memory device or something and they pulled you aside because they thought it was a bomb or something. That got a lot <laughs> more scary than this I was device? <laughs> It's a memory device. Don't be smart. <laughs> uh, I should that's create quite... that. We'll make up that one for next time, all right? Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's much better than the horrifying tale that you just told, Ben. And this is it's one of the reasons why I have no interest in going to the state. I love America. It's a fantastic country. But I've just no interest in going through that and the whole opening up your phones and showing your social yeah, media. Yeah. I, I just no. no I'll wait no, till I, there's a better president. Mem, Mem Fox was a similar time as well, wasn't she? She was over yeah. there doing. Um, but she she does she do some academic stuff over there? Like a uh, yeah, she was not, over there. That's some. right, at a show or a convention or something or other. Well, I was there as um, the guest of my publisher, my American publisher. So, you know, it was all terribly. But I couldn't ring them. I couldn't do anything because I wasn't allowed near my phone. I wasn't allowed near anything. And it's you feel isolated because mm. so all in my head was if anything, if I go to jail, the Amer Australian consulate will look after me. They will, they will, they will. And that's just what kept me calm. Mm. Wow. Not not pleasant at all. No, and I'm a you know little old lady. And <laughs> calm. You come here with your memory devices. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have them with me, but they weren't interested in them. <laughs> no. yeah. Today is Sunday, the fourth of June, twenty seventeen. I'm Ed Brown, and joining me today is Dr. Shane Joseph. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a coughing fit. I'm having a coughing fit. I had to fucking mute it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant. <laughs> I mean, it's not good, God obviously. damn it. <laughs> Fucking hell. No, I want a new throat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, thank you. I'm having beers. I probably shouldn't have this as well. <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> you all right? Would, yes. You say my name and I'll say hello, then I'll turn the mute off and I'll die. <laughs> On, you know what I mean. All right, Penny. Listeners may remember a few years ago we talked about a story that traced the trade and spread of chickens across continents and through Pacific <laughs> Islands. Was that Sorry, funny? That amused me, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to do it again, though, because it just didn't amuse me. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm going to sneeze. Just a All right. Get it out of your system. Okay, that's better. So I'm, I'm waiting muted. for a sneeze. No, I'm muted. I'm muted. I'm muted. I didn't want you to hear my sneeze. <laughs> She's very shy about her sneezes. Hmm. Penny, listeners may remember a few years ago we talked about a story that traced the trade and spread of chickens across continents through Pacific Islands over the last 5,000 years. Well, now a different team has looked at the genome of domestic cats and found that wild cats have been domesticated twice over the last 9,000 years. Two separate occasions of domestication is pretty extraordinary, I think. It is. And this is the kind of story, the study, I mean, that um, in my alternative life where I actually became a scientist... I would have loved to be a part of because they looked at DNA evidence, archaeological evidence, art history evidence, and brought that all together to come up with um, their conclusions. So um, there's not a lot of cat remains in the archaeological record, and it's hard to tell the difference between um, domestic cats and wild cats. And I think for a long time cats have been sort of I don't know if this is scientific, but kind of semi-domesticated. So even though they very much lived with humans and had a, um, you know, a mutually beneficial relationship with humans, like they caught rats and kept down pests, and I guess people liked cats but probably didn't really, I guess, you know, bring them into their lives the way that was done with dogs, for example, or really control their breeding in the way that has been done with, like, our food cattle. You can see why there wouldn't be humongous morphological differences between wild cats and domestic cats. And cat breeding wasn't really a thing apparently until the 19th century where 
there was different dog breeds and cattle breeds uh, long before then. Yeah. So that's interesting. So what's found is that cats were probably, as Ed said, domesticated twice in the Near East when the first farmers started farming and settling down about 9,000 years ago. A cat would have been quite a good thing to have living around your farm because rats might eat your grain and so on and the cat would be able to catch them. But cats were also uh, domesticated in Egypt And what I found really interesting was that as well as cat mummies and so on, there's depictions in Egyptian art. And if you have a look at them going over the centuries, it shows a progressive tightening of the relationship between humans and cats. So like motifs such as cat, a cat sitting under the chair of a woman became really popular as things go on. So the gene pool of modern domestic cats seems to have come from different domestication centres and it seems to have spread or cats seems to have spread through human means because their spread Mm -hmm. seems to happen through ancient trade routes over land and over the ocean. So they looked at um, mitochondrial DNA and ancient DNA and I have to confess I wish someone like Shane was here because I'm not (laughs) <laughs> I'm not up to speed with this yeah. DNA stuff anymore, so I'll just skip to the discussions. <laughs> yeah, is that they were um, like really first one group of domestic cats have an ancestors that were really um, distributed across Anatolia, um, sort of in the fer- Fertile Crescent during the Neolithic, and those cats mm-hmm. spread even to Cyprus and maybe some Roman or Egyptian ports. So that could be that... Um, some of these fertile crescent cats did go to Egypt, but there, did, there seems to be a distinct lineage in Egypt which shows that they were, um, there was an African origin for that domestication, so an Egyptian origin. And they seemed to follow trade routes. So north of the Alps, cats came there after the Roman conquest, but basically apparently until late antiquity, You don't really see cats outside Roman territory, so cats seem to have gone with um, the Romans. In medieval times, seafarers had to have cats on their ships, which meant, I guess, um, for pest control. And what I also found Mm -hmm. really interesting was um, in, you know, when I think of the a cat or a domestic cat, I mean, I guess maybe it's because of the pets that I've had, but I always think of tabbies and this kind of coat pattern, the real stripy kind of cat, didn't actually emerge until uh, the Middle Ages, which, yeah, I guess I always yeah. thought you think, you know, leopards, not leopards, oh, my God, I'm such an idiot, um, tigers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so hard on yourself there, Penny. Whoa. Leopards yeah. and tigers, oh, my. Oh, no, one has spots <laughs> and the other one has stripes. <laughs> anyway, you know, I guess I sort of assumed, oh, tigers, cats, stripes but maybe it's just a mutation that if it happens um Mm. that's kind of you know not too hard to get so i thought that was really interesting because i think cats like i'm a bit of a cat person i like cats um but they don't they i think it's reasonably obvious that their domestication relationship is not as close as dogs have to humans so a lot of people love their cats a lot but i mean Dogs, you know, you can really tell when you're part of their group and or not. But I like reading about this study. I loved the way that they brought in together different kinds of evidence and mm. got that historical stuff as well as the archaeological and the um, DNA evidence. And I guess to, cat domestication was really quite complex process. Again, it's not like someone goes, oh, today I'm going to domesticate the cat. Yay, <laughs> domesticate the cat. Like the cats yeah. themselves probably had a bit of agency. I'm sure if I were a cat, some ancient cat, I'd be like, well, here's this human to put a great pile of wheat that's attracting all the rats. I know I'm just going to go and live there mm. rather than um, forage for myself. So, yeah, I like this story. I liked reading about the cats and it's interesting to think that they could have been domesticated twice in separate events and, you know, we've just... Yeah, I think that's yeah. that's pretty impressive, I think. Mm. It's the sort of thing where you think once there are cats somewhere in the world that that would be where they would all spread from, but to have it then a few thousand years later in an entirely different yeah. part of the world yeah. to happen again is pretty cool, I think. And once again, it's one of these uh, stories where 
different branches from archaeology to art history to uh, genealogy and mm -hmm. genetics, all of these things are coming together to give us something new. It's always exciting when that happens. I was actually a little bit surprised at the statement that today cats live on all continents except Antarctica because many horror movies and sci-fis <laughs> would have a cat in the lab. There'd, all, there'd be a cat. It would be there for sure. I'm really surprised there's no cats in Antarctica. Just saying. Well, Just saying. Not anymore. The lab experiment went wrong. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe uh, if anyone's listening in Antarctica, they can set us straight. If anyone's listening yeah, in actually, Antarctica, can they please let us know? Yeah, because I've that would be that so thought, cool. That would be Really yeah. cool. Yeah. And we are so going to try and get you on the show yeah. to tell us what the yeah, hell you're yeah. doing down there. That's oh, awesome. Oh, man, that'd be so cool. <laughs> yeah. Very we cool. should have spoken to Paul Willis when he was down there. Damn. Yeah. Oh, well. I suppose he was busy doing, you know, the Antarctica 1022 stuff. campaign and whatnot. We did speak to Dr. Steve Salisbury, who had spent some time in there. Doing... Yeah, but not when he was in Antarctica. No, that's I mean, true. I'm not, I'm not sure what the bandwidth to... situation I don't know if they've got NBN down there yet. Uh, <laughs> Lucky <laughs> them. <laughs> me. Yes, good point, Penny. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That was overly bitter. <laughs> yeah, but with accurate, reason, with reason. Yeah, fair point. Some of our listeners may remember in our early days, we talked about them. Penny, I think you were just returned from a holiday or a honeymoon maybe? Mm, in just West a holiday, Australia. I think. Just a holiday? All right. I'll say that again then. Uh, no, no, it's fine. No, no, no. I've fucked it up now, so I'm going to fix it. <laughs> no, I wish I saw stromatolites on my honeymoon, but it was disappointing in that regard. You wish you saw stromatolites at any time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and today we'll be talking about boiling magma, where you might not expect to find it, a new species of grass that could be a tasty snack, and a superniva. The <laughs> superniva? <laughs> <laughs> and a supernova Sorry. that just wouldn't die. Having a, a poodle sitting on your lap for an hour is rather warm. <laughs> we put him to sleep. <laughs> I just, I just, <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> All right. We can sit here awkwardly or we can move back to our seats. Yeah, we'll move back to yeah. our seats. I don't know, I think that poodle comment is going to end up in the outtake slide. <laughs> I am Bruce. Oh, uh, didn't record. We'll have to do it all again. No. <laughs> that has happened. No, no. I just, um, what are the odds that one of the people at the site had said, I reckon we should have one more around there, just one more. They're going, it'll be fine. Mate, it'll be fine. You're such a worry <laughs> And then when it snapped, he's just gone the, I told you so, look. I just reckon <laughs> Actually, no, it wouldn't have been a he. would have been a she. would have been a woman who made that, who said that needs yeah. another one. And the guys would have gone, no. no yeah, fine. what would you so, know? Uh, what do you know? We built shit with our hands and stuff when we were little. Yeah. I might, I might edit <laughs> some I of that politically fun. incorrect stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm having a go at sexism. Not, you know, no, we're not encouraging by it. being sex. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. All right. Um, and the other cool thing I like about it was the, um, the story. I didn't know about the, uh, the Great Ormond Street Hospital, which not long after it opened, nearly closed down because of bankruptcy. And it was only after a, a grant, a donation, I think, from Charles Darwin. No. I'm going to say that. <laughs> Marcos. Um, about the Great Ormond Street uh, Hospital was that it nearly closed down uh, not long after it opened because it just it basically went bankrupt. And it was only after a donation from Charles Dickens, who, of course, wrote so many stories about childhood hardships and that sort of a thing. So I thought that was kind of cool that it nearly went bankrupt but was saved at the last minute. Here you go. The economics oh. prize. Sorry, did someone have something to say to that? No, I had a... Mm. Ah. That's all I was adding. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Penny, have a listen to this. The suspense is killing me. Oh, can you not hear it? No. <laughs> we can't hear anything. Oh, shit. We thought you were <laughs> bucking with us and we were going to add something <laughs> later on. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was thinking, why is he? Why is he actually including a pause? We can do that with the with the, yeah. the modern uh, editing <laughs> techniques. Um, usually, that will play the clip through, but um, not that not time. Today. Do you want to send us a linky and we can watch it ourselves? Nah, fuck it. Or is it not that? Um, was it the young ones? It was the young ones, and it was exactly the clip that you had shared earlier, Penny. <laughs> Basically, it was um, what's his face going on about how great lentils are because you can have as many as you like and you never get bored. Oh, of them. I know this. I know exactly this scene. I, I've yeah. seen it before. All right. Yeah. So we'll just pretend that you've just listened to that I and it was amusing and great. <laughs> now, Lucas, when people think of Antarctica, volcanoes probably aren't the first thing to spring to mind, but the continent is littered with them. And while there hasn't been an eruption for at least 8,000 years, there are signs that, well, maybe there could be one soon-ish. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah there, there, there are quite a few. I thought we were going to wait for people to go to Patreon. Are we just going to wait for a little while or should we just... Like, yeah, they can pause? multitask. Well, they can hit pause. You guys hit yeah. pause at their end. Yeah, that's right. It's a podcast. They can pause it. <laughs> See? It's so cool. Podcast versus radio. Oh. It's awesome. Uh, I'm actually stalling because the freaking stories. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the Jude Google was sheet. really laboring this point a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the Google sheet is just saying still loading and it won't let me. I can see the URL, but I cannot click on the URL. I apologize, Marcos. I was rushing to get ready and it's not opening. Damn you. Can someone slack me the URL yeah. for the, um, just done. the science mag? Yeah. What? yeah is there someone one. shouting cool. out in the background too? That, yeah. Yes, that was Luann saying, uh, Declan! <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's, it's like the Flintstones. Wilma! <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm there. I'm, I'm ready now. Yeah, but dabba do, yes. Are there... So... You go. Sorry, go on. No, I, you go. I was, I was just going to ask, are there birds in your background or something? There's a very high-pitched kind of musical... There are birds. There are birds? That's no, what they're they are. birds. They're okay. actually birds doing bird things. I can't do anything about them, man. They just <laughs> want to be birds. <laughs> can't Shut up. You take their beaks shut or something? <laughs> <laughs> nope. Okay. No. Ooh, They've got talons there? that they will attack me with if I try. So, yeah, you can hear <laughs> okay. birds. You're correct. That's cool. Uh, can't be helped. Yeah. And Australian someone's wildlife. phone needs to be turned off too. Oh, that could have been mine because I've got earphones in so I can't actually hear my phone doing <laughs> things. Let me put uh, on. Do not, dis- do not disturb. Sorry, hour. did you have more that you wanted to say on that? Oh, I'm not really. Story? I think I've crept on enough about this. <laughs> okay. So, and I think that's also <laughs> just the value. Like some yeah. people might spend that on a car mm. or on a holiday. Or a down payment of the house or something. Yeah, you know? like it's, it's, and, it's, yeah. and other people go, oh, my God, they spent it on a car. Who buys a $50,000 car? Yeah. I could buy a $500 car, you know. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> if you put a photo of a car, it's been a while since you've been car shopping, hasn't yeah. it, Penny? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just remembering the car whose name cannot be mentioned on air. <laughs> oh, no, no. Abbreviate it to Even SB that and that will go in there. That, that bucket. <laughs> that bucket. <laughs> the bucket. <laughs> we'll call it the bucket. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, Marcus, maybe edit that bit out because that's going to mean nothing to the vast majority of our True, audience. true. Sorry, I forgot we were actually still doing the show. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. Yes. We once again return to Tabby's star, the strange star one and a half light years away. No, one and a half thousand light years away. I'm going to fucking do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> wow. Harsh. Sorry, that wasn't me. One and a half light years away. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Even I know that isn't that, that isn't the case. We have the nearest stars. All my friends say we have the nearest stars. <laughs> <laughs> the stars. Everybody says they're the best stars. <laughs> Don't listen to what anyone says. There were lots of stars between us and Alpha Centauri. It's millions of them. They're great. We had more stars than any other president. <laughs> I made the stars. <laughs> Which is ironic, given none of the stars actually went to his inauguration. <laughs> I had all the stars. No, you didn't. You couldn't even get a Bruce Springsteen cover band. Let's get back to the show. But they had Superman. Anyway. <laughs> uh, 
But let's get on with the show. And Lucas, we once again return to Tabby Star, the strange star one and a half light, thousand light years away. Uh, to recap, this is a star with... Oh, for fuck's sake! What happened? That was so shameful. You said one and a half light years ago. I know, corrected myself immediately, but you're like, no, I'm not letting you get away with this. You're a dickhead. Let's tell the world. <laughs> I have now written the word thousand into the script, so this will not happen again if I'm allowed to do it again. You tell me what I'm about to get. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Between 1926 and 1963. So. Sorry, the door just opened by itself. Oh. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> just was like, what's going on? Can I just say that? I'm <laughs> going to shut it. <laughs> All right. Um, let me just Start that say again. that bit again. Sorry, that yep. was just really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Once again, we've got to go back and take another look at the great Stradivarius debate. For the third time since 2012, a study has been done looking into whether the... F- Are you all right? Shane? What? I'm laughing. Why? Because this bloody Stradivarius story. Actually, <laughs> three bloody times. Seriously. We get it. It's an old violin. It's great. Let's move on. Jesus Yeah, Christ. I know. You, you'll notice I had it at the bottom of the list, but uh, <laughs> Penny's like... Well, I didn't know. I'm not going to do the cool story about the parasite that infects fish eyes. No, we're going back to Stradivarius violence. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I might do that all again. Mm-hmm. But first, Shane, we do love talking about exoplanets on the show. And 39 light years away from Earth lies the low mass super Earth known affectionately as GJ1138b. And now a team of ast- uh, hmm. Of astronauts? B. Wow. And now a team of astronomers. Three, two, three, <laughs> yeah, it's 1132B. Yeah. One, one, it's 1132, one, one, not 1138. Not in the article I looked at. 1132 one, 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 in both the ones I'm looking at, mate. Oh, you know what? Actually, uh, I'm looking you're at, right. Uh, they, jump, oh. they jump back and forth between it here. It's a bit confusing. Right. What the hell? No, no. Yeah. They say, yeah, you're right. They said 2 and 8. Oh, so it says oh, here this study shit. titled Detection of the Atmosphere of the 1.6 Earth Max S Exoplanet GJ1132b, but mm. then they talk about 1138b throughout the article. Yeah, and then again, one with, That's on, universe today. Gonna... Maybe The Guardian has different uh, well, no, numbers. I'm going go to I'm gonna go to the study. Oh, what would they know? <laughs> Should I go to the... Oh. Hang on. 1132 throughout the garden. Bloody hell. Where's the actual study? It's 1132. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely 1132. Yep. This is why you need fucking copy editors and stuff. My God. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Well, good, because now I can do that intro again and not say astronauts instead of astronomers. No, say astronauts again. It'll be hilarious. (laughs) Cosmonauts have discovered... No. Cosmonauts. <laughs> Quiet on set. In communist Russia, we go to places and... You know. This sort of treatment is very expensive and it costs a lot of money to the economy from people being out of work and therefore an 11-day difference in healing time is very... <laughs> so, um... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We haven't had Jez interrupt for a long time. <laughs> Does she need to be let out or something? Or? I'm in the, I'm in our room. I went to the room on purpose so because Eve came home late with the dog and she was at her mum's place. Right. And now, yeah. Anyway, so oh, she came in late. Anyway, so that's fine. Uh, we welcome her cameo appearances on the show. <laughs> yeah. Where was I? I don't even know where I was. What was, what was I talking uh, about? I think we pretty much finished. Um, basically, when it infects an animal, do you want to get your phone? Sorry, I just, um, I'll just <laughs> put it silent. <laughs> Thank you very much for that feedback, Spencer. We really like knowing what you all uh, like and 
why you listen to us and, and what you don't like, what we can do to help that. And, of course, don't Sorry, forget. To- it was an ad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. An ad started. <laughs> right. We'll edit that out. <laughs> Web page. And then Shane talking for a change about the gut microbiome. <laughs> yeah, just for a change. Yeah. Uh, That's is why that I want to the sun story because the least was something different. <laughs> I is this the one with the, the poo blue? The blue no, poo? I, didn't, I, didn't, no. I didn't touch that one. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not going near that. I'm, I'm yeah. learning that for someone who is so up with it and so good at talking about gut bacteria, Shane has a massive aversion to anything poo related. <laughs> yes. Which is not because unusual or bad. It's just, you know. There's, there's a reason he, well, that, you know, there's an evolutionary kind of gag reflex when it comes to feces. It's because it's disgusting waste. You lose that when you become a parent, don't you, Penny? Apparently yep. you do. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I plan not to. Oh, like I'd probably change my clothes if they got shit all over them. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Charming. All right. I like the probably there. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Okay. I know. Yeah. Should, should have to think about it. Like, I do, do a real cost-benefit analysis. <laughs> is it going to get shit on it eventually sooner or later anyway? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is it, is it even more shit? Am I going out? So, uh, wow. All right. Let me just go get my earphones. Just give me a sec. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds like he's falling over everything. I <laughs> know. <laughs> Yeah, it's because the fucking microphone's picking up everything. Oh, you're taking your laptop with you. No, I'm not. I'm oh. trying to get off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> the chair's like a... It's like a fucking... Stuck to you. you know, no, it's, it, it's kind of like a... I can't describe like an, an animal that sort of holds onto you and doesn't let go. Anyway. That is it. <laughs> oh, wow. Can Good. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. You're very loud and bassy, which is not a bad thing necessarily, unless it means it's That's recording. That's because I'm loud and bassy. <laughs> That's a fucking lie. Um, uh, no, like, no it, it was it, like James Earl Jones all of a sudden. Um, no, I think it's good. I, I prefer, I prefer, I prefer um, Barry White, but that's fine. This episode was edited with a giant can of shark repellent by Marcos Benamou. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll be back again next week, putting science on top of the agenda. Join us then. Cool. Well, shark repellent? What? Uh, you didn't hear? Adam West died? Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. He, uh, Not a fan of the 1967 hate, Batman. No, I fucking hate that Batman. <laughs> I hate the fact that he ruined Batman. Wow. And I, hate the fact, and I hate the fact that everyone loves it, too. It's like, it's so shit. It's just fucking ridiculous. That's why we love it. No, it's so no, no. bad, it's great. No, no. <laughs> just no. Oh, Look, maybe, 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 maybe it's because I love Batman, okay? Maybe <laughs> that's what it is. I mean, you know, Batman's supposed to be dark. Batman's supposed to be a, you know, he's an unpalatable well. character. <laughs> why did you put him in pyjamas and have him run around like a fucking idiot? Anyway. It was I, the style I, I, of the right. time. Uh, I don't care. Pyjamas are your issue? Have you seen any other superhero movie? The pajamas are your issue. He looked like he was wearing pantyhose. It was ridiculous. I'm just, no, I don't. No, nah. Right. All right. No. Okay. I did. I read, and this is probably not something you necessarily want to know, but um, mm. Burt Ward, who played Robin in yeah. the original series, uh, apparently they had all sorts of trouble trying him, to hide right? his yeah. his rather large bulge, shall we say, in those tight fitting. Pants. That's right. That's yeah. right. He was he was rather um, large. And it was no. really hard to- <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah, uh, they got complaints. Uh, well, so, so here's the thing: though. apparently Adam West was even in his later years was saying that oh, they should you know they should make Batman more like it was when I did it. I have some great ideas, and everyone would say, "Yeah, no, shut up, Adam, you're a fuck." <laughs> and then apparently he was even he was even suggesting that they should make a movie and have have him play Batman's father. Now, uh-huh. yeah, that, do you see the problem with this? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, the lack of father. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So this is why I don't like, but I don't like Adam West. I okay. Think- but in the meantime, of course, we'll have our bloopers episode out. Keep an eye on scienceontop.com for that. 
Thank you, everyone, for listening. We'll be back again next year, putting science on top of the agenda. Join us then. That whole last bit, I had, I was on the verge of a sneeze, and just when oh, I no. finished it, it went away. And it's like, oh, well, okay. I was, I was rushing. It wasn't obvious. Cool. Cool. <laughs> we got through it. That's what matters. Yeah, as, long, as long as it didn't sound like a total, sh- total shit song, that last bit. That last one.